I want you to know that you can still lose weight eating your pasta. I think this is a, a great idea, and I like Dr. Mandel's approach. I, I think this is Keto Doc approved. Hi, Dr. Eric Westman here with another Dr. Westman Reacts. This is a video from Motivational Doc, and I've looked at some of his before, pretty reasonable, Dr. Mendel, and uh, says one cool trick turns carbs into less calories and increases insulin sensitivity. Let, let's see what he asks. Everyone loves to splurge when it comes to eating. We realize that when we eat too much refined and processed carbs, this can eventually lead to insulin resistance as well as prediabetes and diabetes. But hold on, everyone loves their pasta. You may not be eating it every day, but you can eat it more often and still be able to lose weight as well as to feel more satiated. So I like to review a simple study. And the title of this study is Method of Food Preparation Influences Blood Glucose Response to a High Carbohydrate Meal, a Randomized Crossover Trial. And this study was given to three different groups where all of them were eating the same kind of pasta with a tomato sauce and basil, where one group ate the pasta directly after it was cooked. The other group ate the pasta after it was cooled for 24 hours, where they ate it cool or cold. And the last group ate it after 24 hours when it was cooled, but they reheated it. And the study was about showing that reheating pasta causes changes in postprandial glucose response with a quicker return to fasting levels in both the reheated and the cooled conditions. So, okay, time out. <laughs> if you're trying to really be keto, I wouldn't eat regular pasta, even very frequently. The reason for that is you can trigger the hunger and cravings for any of these carb and sugar containing foods by just having one of one serving of the real thing. And yeah, I know this might not make sense to you if you have not had this experience, but uh, it's some, commonly nuts will make you eat more nuts. Um, fruit will make you eat more fruit. Ice cream will make you eat more ice cream. There, there's like no, no signal to stop when you're eating those foods. So if you're doing a keto diet, and you're happy, satisfied without pasta, I'd say, okay, don't, don't even, let's not even listen. I mean, so what they're trying to do is find, find ways to reduce the absorption of the carbohydrates so there's less of a blood sugar and insulin rise after the meal so that you can, you know, maybe, you know, have a cigarette but have less nicotine sort of thing. So, you know, I suppose that's a valid sort of thing, but there, you get the consequences of, of the, the smoking or you get the consequences of the carbs by eating them. So uh, an alternative way, in, instead of fine tuning the different type of regular pasta, is to find a pasta substitute or a, an alternative that gives you the feel of it. And interestingly, you know, there's some really new, interesting products that are tasty and, and available, widely available now. 10 years ago, we would teach people to have zucchini noodles or, or uh, zoodles. You can get them at the store. You get spaghetti squash and, and make it that way. But there are actually pasta substitutes uh, that are made. Uh, the one I've seen from shirataki uh, noodles, which is a, a type of, uh, of root. Uh, and, and then the hearts of palm noodles made from hearts of palm. The, the, you get the noodle feel. Yeah, they even make it in, in a spaghetti uh, or, and fettuccine and rice kind of uh, uh, consistency. An alternative to trying to cook the pasta in a different way is to have an alternative source. It's not really the, the flour or the, the, however the regular pasta was made. Um, but uh, so let, let's see. My sense is that there's going to be a rise, and but less of a rise in glucose and insulin when you cook the pasta in different ways. So let's see. Condition. And in the process of cooling down this pasta over 24 hours, causes the starch in the pasta to undergo retrogradation. That's a process by which the glucose molecules and starch reassociate with each other in an irregular fashion post-gelatinization. Now, what's important about resistant starch is that when it gets into the small intestine from our stomach, it doesn't digest, and it makes its way to the colon, 
right where the main microbiome is of our body. And those probiotics will look at this resistant starch kind of like a soluble fiber or what we call a prebiotic. And the purpose of that resistant starch or that prebiotic is to feed those probiotics, to make the probiotic, the microbiome flourish. So the bottom... Uh-oh. <laughs> One of the functions of the microbiome in the colon is to take starch and turn it into gas. So if you've noticed having very starchy things, giving you more gas, meaning flatulence, that is one of the functions of the bacteria in, in the colon, the large intestine. So I'm thinking that while this might give you more resistant starch to the, the colon, if you don't uh, if you reheat the starch the next day, re reheat the pasta. This might not be a good idea in terms of, of tolerability and, um, you know, those, those candies that have sorbitol or sugar alcohol that say excessive consumption may have a laxative effect. That's because these sugar alcohols will get to the colon and, and then your microbiome basically turns them into gas and, and you get bloating, that sort of thing. So, okay, so the idea is that if you reheat the pasta the next day, I guess leftovers, it'll have less of absorption um, in the small intestine. The line is that you are boosting your overall gut health and all diseases in our body stem initially from our gut. So as we increase that good bacteria, we're decreasing levels of constipation. We're lowering levels of bad cholesterol, we're reducing that bloating, we're allowing the gastrointestinal system to function at its maximum potential. And what's beautiful about this resistant starch is that it makes you more insulin sensitive. So that means we're reversing insulin resistance. We are altering and correcting metabolic syndrome. Well, so a point about that, the comment or the statement that it reduces insulin resistance or makes you more insulin sensitive, that's because compared to the regular pasta, but the resistant starches, if you compared it to no starch at all, you would have better reduction in insulin, insulin resistance by having no starch at all, which is an interesting, yeah, when, once you hear that, you'll, you'll, I hope you remember that when someone says, well, you know, diabetes, there's less diabetes. Well, but there was diabetes. You know, so we, we want to have a, a, a metabolic health where there's no diabetes at all. So the resistant starch is better than the not resistant starch. We are preventing excessive insulin from being secreted into our system, into our blood, insulin, insulinemia, that potentially can lead to excessive fat stores, as well as excessive inflammation to the rest of our body. So in the lower intestinal tract, these resistant starches are going through microbial fermentation and it's producing short chain fatty acids, primarily butyrate. And butyrate has a direct effect on those colonocytes, which are those cells throughout our colon. And that works as a major anti-inflammatory and that can prevent colon cancer. That butyrate also makes its way to the bloodstream and works as an anti-inflammatory throughout the entire body as well as all the organs throughout. And there are other sources of resistant starch, like our oats, our rice, our potatoes, raw potatoes, as well as our green bananas, as well as our lentils, beans. But when it comes to pasta, which everybody loves, I want you to know that you can still lose weight eating your pasta because if you cool it down 24 hours or even if you reheat it thereafter, you're going to get a bunch of resistant starch in that pasta. So when it gets into your intestines, particularly the small intestine where the absorption occurs, it's not going to get digested. It's going to get digested in the colon where the good bacteria is going to eat it up. And as a result of that good bacteria, you're going to get these natural anti-inflammatories that's going to go throughout your body to keep it more healthier. Well, you know, I, I, th I like the, the approach that you want to uh, reduce the blood glucose and insulin. I, I think you can reduce that pathway even more by not having pasta at all or having a substitution. It would be interesting to see a comparison of uh, one of these uh, day-old, well, let's say pasta leftovers, uh, reheated compared to, say, uh, a, a noodle made from the hearts of palm or um, konjac. Um, 
shirataki noodle to see that comparison. Of course, tolerability is an important factor to keep in mind. So I, I guess before, like any new food, test it once and don't just test it, see how it tastes, test it and see what happens the next day for the full effect of the microbiome, either, you know, going to town on the food that you just had. Uh, and uh, it reminds me of a, a meeting where someone tested all of this new, uh, brand new dessert, and it, it was delicious. But, you know, I, I had one serving, and I've been around enough to know that a new keto dessert, you want to be a little careful because if you overconsume it, it'll come through, and the next day is not going to be very great. But this one attendee at the meeting, we were at a, a, a conference in, in a small group the next day, and I wondered why he kept going back to the bathroom and back. And it's because he, thinking back, he was the one who had like five servings of this new keto dessert, and it was having its effect in, by the microbiome the next day. So always <laughs> test out things judiciously. So you know, if, if you if your metabolism allows you to eat more carbs. You're not trying to be keto all the time for some medical reason. I, I, I think this is a, a great idea, and I like Dr. Mandel's approach. So I, I think this is keto doc approved, but if you're really trying to be super strict and, and achieve a metabolic result using nutritional ketosis, and even this is a little too many carbs, and you want to try one of the pasta substitutes. I hope this is helpful. Please like subscribe, ring the notification bell, send to a friend. This is a grassroots change. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And check out adapterlifeacademy.com.